In a previous video, I discussed why I think Sonic characters should get their own spin-off title games. You should like totally check that video out by the way, it'll help you understand the context of this video so much better. But for those who don't want to leave this video, here's a clip from the last video to better explain what we'll be talking about in this video. Although I absolutely despise Sonic Forces, the character creation, the your OC character was actually a unique idea, and I think Sonic Forces would have been a perfect non-Sonic game to experiment with this. Hear me out. Now, the game isn't good. You would have to fix a lot of like the level stuff and everything like that, but imagine Sonic is actually kidnapped by Eggman for like the first and second half of the game. Like, you think, you actually think, I know they wouldn't do this because it's a kid's game, but you would actually think that Sonic is dead from the beginning. Because those of you unaware, Sonic Forces, it starts off really dark, it makes it seem like Sonic was defeated, Eggman took over the world, but then like two seconds later, you're playing as Sonic again. And it really takes you out of that narrative. I really like that concept if they would have actually built it out. Imagine a game, people might have been a little bit disappointed at first, but imagine a game where the first and second act of the game you are not playing as Sonic, you're playing as your OC, you're playing as maybe Knuckles, two other side Sonic characters. Maybe that's where you bring Silver back into the fold, and you're trying to defeat Eggman thinking that Sonic is gone. So that builds the strength of all these characters up where they're not just relying on Sonic. And then that third and final act, you save Sonic, you find out he's alive, everyone's getting really excited, and then you play as Sonic for the long haul at the very end, and that makes Sonic seem even stronger, better and more powerful. Man, I'm getting excited just thinking about this. This would have been crazy. And then he goes supersonic and just goes in and defeats Infinite, right? Like that would be crazy. That still emphasizes Sonic as the main hero, but you actually put him on the backseat for a little bit. That would have been a crazy game. Me just saying that is like, wow, they really missed something. So I decided to take this idea and run with it as a series for this channel. Hello everyone, I'm OCD Zaster, and this is OCD Zaster Blue, my Sonic exclusive channel. That's right, anything Sonic related, there will be content here for you. Anything else will be over on my main channel, OCD Zaster. Because of the light bulb idea I had regarding a better version of Sonic Forces, I have decided to start a little series on how I would have made the game. I really do not like Sonic Forces, but if you enjoyed it, then that's your experience and opinion, and I am happy for you. For me, the game lacked a lot of potential. I also want to say that I do know that there's a really awesome fan-made mod that touches up forces and makes it better. It even has its own animations and stuff. I believe it's called Sonic Forces Overclocked, if I'm not mistaken. But this is going to be something completely different. This isn't going to be like a mod or some conception that I wanted to do to just make the game a little bit better. No, this is if I had the right to make a Sonic Forces game, if I had the power to do it all myself, how would I do it? Like I said, this is going to be a series, so in this first episode, I wanted to quickly let you know all the things that I didn't like with Sonic Forces, and why I'm so passionate about just completely changing this game, and how I think it could have been something super spectacular. Episode 2 is going to be on the plot, and some things that I would fix to make the plot better and more entertaining. Once again, I'm building this game hypothetically from the ground up, so there is going to be a lot changed, but I want to go into more detail on the plot in the second episode. The third episode, I want to go into the nitty gritty mechanics and mission structure I would have for this game. And then the final and fourth episode will be on marketing strategies, how you would even sell a game like this, and really just putting it all together into one final package for you. So if all that is interesting and you want to stick around, for the series, be sure that you are subscribed to this channel so that way you can stay up to date for when those videos come out. With Sonic X Shadows Generations coming out in a week, this series is probably going to start and then kind of stop for a little bit as I push out that content and then start back up. So it is important that you stay up to date on the channel in order to see those episodes because it's going to be a pretty big spread between each one. But hey, you're also going to get Sonic X Shadow content in the long run. To dedicate myself to this video and to the series, I actually played through the entirety of Sonic Forces again, recording my entire experience. I didn't do any commentary or anything like that, but you can watch the walkthroughs, my no commentary walkthroughs on the channel right now. Those are being uploaded as we speak. However, I just wanted to say I went back into this game fresh, so that way I had a fresh take because I haven't played this game in so long, and man, I I had to struggle. I, I really did not have a fun time replaying this game. 
And I think we can start there. Sonic Forces is not a good replayable experience because it's very hectic to choose the levels. You can't do a file select. It's all in one file. You have to completely start over your file if you want to do a new game. It just does not make replayability that fun. I remember going to find footage just for like B-roll and it was just so annoying to find what stages you could play as Sonic versus what stages you could play as Classic Sonic, both Sonic and the Avatar and the Avatar stage. There should be like a filter or something like that or a list view for the stages so you don't have to go around the globe setting. I think the globe is cool and is neat for the campaign, but when it comes to replayability it's just obnoxious to try to figure out what you want. I'm going to reiterate this because I'm going to be complaining about this game a lot, but if you do like this game, that is perfectly fine. That is your opinion, and I'm not going to try to convince you otherwise. I'm just very passionate about this game because I saw the potential and saw them fail, in my opinion. So that's why I'm going to be doing this at the very beginning of this series. It's just so you get my perspective. So once again, I'm going to be bashing this game. It's just because I know Sonic Team can do better. And I really do appreciate Sonic games. The second biggest glaring issue for me for this game is the controlling of all of the characters. It just feels off, most especially classic Sonic. He just feels like he accelerates when you jump. So if you don't time your jumps really well or you don't like flick the, the analog stick back and forth to make sure you hit the platform correctly, he'll just like fly off. Um, there's a lot about the classic Sonic stages that I just... Anyway, what I really don't like about Sonic is when you're going fast, you lose complete control, and it doesn't work well with the level design, which I'll go into in a second. I did a whole video on the Sonic problem and the problem I have with a overarching generalization of Sonic games, so if you want to check that out, you can after this video. I think it's pretty good. I think I have some good points there. But once again, if you disagree, that's absolutely fine. But yeah, I just did not like actually physically playing as these characters, which I think is very important to a game. Is The game has to be fun, and it has to control well. And I don't think this game controlled well, and I don't think it was fun. There was a lot of times where I died, not because of a skill issue, but just because the game was like, hey... I don't want you to jump here. Like, it just wasn't registering my jumps. It was very sticky. Uh, the biggest thing that I keep thinking about, because I had this issue every time I replayed Sonic Forces, was the wall jumping. For some reason, the wall jumping just did not seem to respond well. And it just irritated the absolute crap out of me. Sonic Forces is difficult, but it's only difficult because you're fighting the controls the entire time. Other than that, it would be a very easy game. Next is the length of the game. It's a short game. Like I said, I replayed this game and I beat it within a few hours, like maybe two, three hours. And I played the cutscenes, I did the dialogue bubbles, I did the whole shebang to get the footage. It, yeah, it's, it's a quick game. And you feel it. I know Sonic's supposed to be fast, but the level designs just do not suit well. Even the good levels in Sonic Forces. As soon as you start getting in the groove and you start really liking where it's going, you're done. You finish the level. They are half-baked levels, and they are uninspired. Because most of them are just recycled assets of Chemical Plant or a type of Green Hill. It's the same thing where it's just like they're running out of inspiration ideas. But it's also, I understand... Like, time constraints and pressure from the publisher but yeah it the levels are absolutely just terrible there's only like three that I actually enjoy but once again as soon as I really get into them the level's already over so for speed running purposes I guess it's okay another thing I really want to mention about the level designs and the levels in Sonic Forces is there are shortcuts there's actually a lot of different shortcuts and different pathing but for some reason it's very difficult to access them Especially if you're boosting. If you're boosting, it'll put you in like an invisible pathing to the main course. You have to really like fight, or at least I did. I had to fight my controller to get over to some spots because I knew there was like secrets and stuff, but like the game didn't want me to go over there. So that was another thing. The best way you could tell how short and quick these levels are is when you're collecting the red rings when you see how quickly you're already towards getting all five. If it's like 
40 seconds into the level and you already have four of the red rings, you know you're about to finish the stage. Like, it's crazy. The Avatar is the most unique and creative thing of Sonic Forces. They put in OC, you can create your own characters, you can customize, you can get unlockable equipment for them, you have them in the actual story, you get to play as them for a significant portion, and you get to play as them with Sonic. All these things I actually think are pretty solid. You get Wisp Weapons, which is a cool little callback to Sonic Colors, however, there are definitely uh, some issues with the Wisp weapons. There's not a lot of variety, and they are all essentially the same. They have different effects and do different things, but there's like one or two that are just clearly better than the rest, and you really only need to use the original one you get, the flame one, the flamethrower, because that one you just burn through enemies, and then you can get the burst ability and just skip portions of stages. So it's like there's no real incentive to switch up the weapons or try something new um so that's the only real gripe i have about the avatar stages is i think they really could have played around a little bit more and they really could have fine-tuned the wisps but out of everything of sonic forces the avatar is obviously the strong part of the game classic sonic should not exist in this game there was no point for him to be in they just really wanted to get people hyped for the game think of it as a generation successor they wanted to adhere to the modern sonic fans and the classic he shouldn't be in this game at all there was no need he's pointless narratively and his stages are the worst out of all the stages so yeah i just cannot emphasize enough how much i don't like classic sonic in this game like almost all sonic games the music bangs but in Sonic Forces, it's a mixed bag. There are still some really good ones in there, and some stages have some good tracks. But, once again, classic Sonic stages are like ear cancer. I cannot stand it. It sounds so bad on some of those levels. So yeah, even when it comes to like music and scoring, it's not the best as a Sonic game could be. It's not up to standard. When it comes to boss fights, they're pretty mixed I think some are good, some are bad. The infinite fights normally are good, unless it's the Avatar infinite fight. I don't like that one. Uh, the final boss can kiss my butt. That one took me way too long. Part of it's skill issue, but another part is just like, it was ridiculous. Um, and then, what else? Uh, there are some that are just like forgettable. So I would say it's like a 50-50 when it comes to the boss fights for this. There needed to be more, especially if you're going to tease and show off like all of Sonic's villains, you know. But uh, yeah, we, we, we can talk about that in a second. I think this is the first Sonic game where they take out the lives entirely and you just get retries. You don't have a certain amount of lives before a game over. And... Uh, I'm glad they did that for this game because they realized how broken it is and how unfair it is to the player. But uh, yeah, that, that was something I just wanted to note. And then the grading is pretty easy. Like, you can retry like three or four times and still get it at A rank or S rank. Which just proves that the developers knew like this game was not going to be fair to the player. So I just want you to keep that in mind as well when critically thinking about this game. Finally, the biggest thing I want to talk about is the story because it is so, like, whiplash. It is so, like, back and forth between, like, we're about to hit peak territory to this is literal, like, trash. I can't tell you, like, where it lies half the time. Because it's like someone made a really good, bad fanfic for Sonic. So, essentially, uh, TLDR, whatever you want to call it when you're speaking, you're not really reading, is at the very beginning... Sonic gets defeated by a new villain called Infinite who's working for Eggman and also all of the villains. Sonic's villain rogue comes back, they all jump him, he gets knocked out, he gets proclaimed dead and then you're seeing this view of six months later as a resistance force led by Knuckles as Eggman's empire has completely taken over and you're trying to slowly take out Eggman bases and save the world. To me, that concept is awesome is amazing but then literally i mean literally like two minutes after all this dialogue all this exposition all of this hey sonic's alive and then they talk about him being tortured which is crazy 
But then, at the same time, they start... What I'm trying to say is, the story could have been good. It had a good skeleton, it had a good bones. But then, they couldn't commit to it. I don't know if it was, you know, publisher interference. I don't know if they just were, like, very, like, flaky and didn't want to commit too much. But it's like, you have these darker themes and these really good moments and this really like adult type of language like they're using stuff like sit rep and like things that i would never see in a sonic kids game but then they immediately flip it back and it's very like juvenile and very like silly so it it, it keeps juggling around for a second you know knuckles is telling vector that this is war and then in the next second it's like oh hey sonic's back and it's just it's so jarring and what makes it worse is, like I said earlier, is a lot of it's exposition dump. A lot of it is text on the screen. You're watching these characters just talk with word bubbles. There's very few cutscenes. And then to top it all off, Infinite is not a menacing villain. He defeated you once in a cutscene, and then you defeat him like three different times as Sonic and the Avatar. And he's talking about how he's so powerful, but like he hasn't shown it because you've beaten him so many times. And then you barely fight any of the rogues gallery. You don't fight Shadow. You don't fight Chaos. And it's like, those were the hype selling points for the game when they were marketing it. It looked dark. The cities were on fire. There were giant Death Eggman robots. Very cool setting. Then you see all the villains, all the Sonic villains, and it's alluding to you will be fighting these guys again. But you really don't. I understand that it's a kid's game. For the most part, I understand that they can't, like, have the main titled character dead or even thought of being dead. But if that's the case, then why did you even throw that in there? He could have just been captured for six months and you guys have just been working on a plan to rescue him instead of doing, like, a quick little rug pull right after saying that, like, he was defeated and blah, 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 blah. Tails is losing it. Like, it, it's so dramatic. It's I think that's the best word. It's so dramatic and it takes away when you just immediately like rewrite what you said like two seconds ago so it just seems like a really good bad fanfic and i'm very passionate about it because i feel like it could have been great it reminded me of like the archie comics in a way inspired in that sense and they just kind of like they were too chicken to actually fully commit and then once again they were showing off all these villains and all this stuff, and it just ended up not working in that direction. Once again, I sympathize with the developers if they were rushed, if there was a bunch of stuff going on in the background, if they were working on Sonic Frontiers at the same time. Like, I get it, right? It's, it's not fun being a video game developer, but fans, Sonic fans especially, we deserve more. And back to this is like a kid's game, there are a lot of adult Sonic fans. And that's why they added Classic Sonic in. Let's not pretend like little kids the most of them don't even know the classic Sonic formula. So they really were trying to play both audiences and it just did not work. I, uh, it, it irritates me. Along with the storyline for the Avatar, how can I forget? It's like they're trying to empower your, your OC character, which makes sense towards the end, but at the very beginning, how he gets recruited, he's called the rookie. I don't know. It just, they could have done more there. It could have been more meat. Uh, because once again, it's a quick story, it's a quick campaign, it only took me a few hours to beat, but yeah, um, that's the story, and that's basically my review of Sonic Forces, so that's the first part of this video, the very end of this video, I'm just gonna go into, like, some quick umbrella changes that I would like to do for my remake, or my just building this game up if the game never was created and I got to build it myself. I'm just gonna go over some, like, elevator pitch stuff and then in the next episode we'll dive a little bit deeper into that but if i had to give sonic forces an overall grade it would be a c it gets a c rank because all the stuff i mentioned previously there's some good stuff in there but there's a lot of bad stuff or mediocre stuff that just puts it down so how would you rank sonic forces let me know down in the comments if i got to make a sonic forces game from the ground up I would pretty much keep the story and just flush it out even more. I really like the idea of the resistance. I think having an avatar in there is really creative. So like I said, the bones, the structure of the story can stay, but I would definitely make sure the language and the tone match and don't just pull away from each other. I think that's a big element that needs to be fixed. And then I do want more impact from the villains. I want there to actually be some heavy lifting from them so i do want people to be able to fight 
Chaos and Shadow, even if they are the Phantom Ruby forms, I do think the Phantom Ruby can stay. I'm cutting Classic Sonic altogether. He will not be in my version of this game. Nuh uh, no way. Infinite's gonna be much more of a menace and a lot harder and more difficult. I think he needs to be a bigger presence in that sense. I believe in showing, not telling, so much less exposition dumping and just dialogue bubbles. It would be more heartfelt cutscenes that really elevate the content. I think that's important. So I think those are the biggest story elements that I would do. As game goes, I would want this game to be like eight hours long for the campaign. And four of those hours would be gameplay, and the other four would be story. Maybe even six hours of gameplay. And, you know, I'll get into the more technical side of it later, but I really want an emphasis on the gameplay. I want the levels to be longer. I want the levels to have a bunch of variety and different mission structures and actually feel like it's, you know, a part of this world and you're actually going to these Eggman bases and eliminating forces stuff that i would keep from sonic forces the map is still great in like a risk kind of style where you're seeing a meter and how much eggman's taking over how much sonic's forces are taking over i think that can stay i forgot to mention this in my review of the game but they tried to make the game replayable in the sense that they have like sos missions and like these t tiny little side things that you can do with the avatar characters you can rent other people's avatar characters those are all fine. You can keep those, I guess. It really does help flesh out the world a little bit. Just make them a little bit better when it comes to like playing. My Sonic Forces game would have a heavy emphasis on the resistance. The first one third of the game, you are not playing as Sonic. You are playing as the resistance characters, Vector, Silver, Knuckles, Amy, Tails, you're playing as these characters and really getting moments with them and their own feel, their own gameplay styles to make it seem like it's a multi-faceted game. But like I said, it's still only going to be a third of the game. So it's only going to be like an hour and a half, two hours of playing as these characters. And then Sonic will come back into the fold and he will be two thirds of the game. But also in that you have the avatar and you'll still have like a mix mash of Sonic playing a stage and a few characters helping him out in that stage and playing with the avatar and then the last half the last stretch of the game you're just playing as Sonic to really emphasize how powerful he is and how important he is in this story because I think that's important and I think Sonic is still a good main focus but you have to show that his characters and his friends and the resistance can be strong even without him they can put up a fight It'd be really cool to have them fight Sonic's villains because they never got a chance. Have a Sonic character that's not Sonic fight Chaos, Shadow. That would make for some interesting gameplay, some interesting storytelling, some new creative like cutscenes and interactions. Have them fight Infinite and maybe even lose to Infinite to just show how much stronger Sonic is when he actually eventually beats Infinite. I think these are all things that would really, really, really help. And that's going to be about it for what I would do on the higher level pitch for this game. Like I said, I'm going to talk about level design. I'm going to talk about mission structure, more intricate storytelling, and stuff like that in future videos. So if you are interested, be sure to once again subscribe to the channel to stay up to date because that will be coming out later in the latter half of the year probably because we have a lot of new Sonic stuff coming out soon and I'm very excited. So if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. Comment down below what you think of my review of Sonic Forces and what I would do to overall change the game would you do the same thing? What are your ideas? I would love to hear them down below. I'm OC Disaster, and I hope you have a super Sonic rest of your day. See ya. Yeah.